What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, letting you guys know what the heck happened at YCS Secaucus, New Jersey. I, of course, as always, spent my weekend reading up on the coverage so that you didn't have to. This event was absolutely crazy. I feel like there were all eyes on New Jersey because there were so many things that we wanted to learn from this event. And I think the event told us a whole lot about the meta that I definitely did not see coming. If there was one word that I would use to describe this event as a whole, it would definitely definitely be chaotic this was one of the most chaotic events that i've seen in recent memory and i'm talking about probably going back years and years um you guys know that not every ycs takes the meta in new and interesting places we sometimes have an established meta and the ycs doesn't really give us anything new it doesn't give us anything interesting this was not one of those events and i feel like there were a couple of reasons that the Yu-Gi-Oh community had to watch this uh you know event because obviously we had the flames of destruction meta where you know you had new players like scott well, excuse me, you, you had the Ultra guys and you had the Goki kind of being thrown into the tier one ring. You obviously had decks like Spiral that were coming back. And now with the Nightmares, they were tier one. You had some kind of layover from the uh, the, the previous ban list and True Draco. Very fundamentally strong deck. Yes, they lost Masterpiece, but they gained a couple copies of Ignis, Heat, and Dynamite. But obviously, the big kind of uh, new addition was Dark Saviors. This was the first event that was held, the first major premier event that was played with Dark Dark Saviors in. It was expected that Sky Strikers would make a big dent in the impact, and that's one thing we had to see. The second thing, and this is actually one of the biggest, actually probably the biggest story of the entire event, was this was the first Yu-Gi-Oh! event played with the new end of match procedures and that is where all the absolute chaos comes into play i'm gonna talk about that in a second but as always i like to start with the attendance of the event we had over 1300 people at this event and that's obviously very strong i believe that that's right about what we had at um ycs atlanta which was the first ycs of the year so it's, it kind of shows that player interest in uh you know competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is obviously still very strong now let's go ahead and get to the skinny let's talk about some of the crazy stuff that happened the first thing that we got to talk about guys before we even get into the competitive play in Yu-Gi-Oh was the end of match procedure oh my god it was a freaking nightmare no pun intended I'm not talking about the archetype baby it was crazy from what I've heard and this this is actually so mind-blowing I didn't want to believe it at first until more and more people were actually saying it my understanding is by the end of round four, 28% or roughly of the players who actually entered the event already had draws as a result of one of their rounds. How the freak does that even happen you're talking about mm, almost one in every three players i know that would be 33 percent, but i'm gonna round up a little bit almost one in every three players had a draw by the end of, of round three excuse me round four like that is absolutely insane and it's crazy because you obviously know these Yu-Gi-Oh players are not going out there just trying to draw you never would try and intentionally draw in the early rounds people only did that in the late rounds that's why konami made a rule against intentionally drawing because people would have the same record they'd be like well if i get one more point i automatically get in then they would draw people don't do that anymore at least they don't do it in the early rounds it doesn't make much sense because you get one point for a draw and you get three points for a victory but it was happening at a rampant pace at this event and you even had high profile players like Jeff Jones and uh, Max Reynolds that were talking about how people were just trying to soft cheat and they were just doing all of this cheesy stuff when it comes to end of match. And I talked about it, guys, when they first kind of announced it in the Yu-Gi-Oh community as we you know, we yu gi -Tubers were learning about the new rules. I said there are going to be so many situations where you're walking around, you see two guys going in the time or two guys about to go in the time and one player just wants to go straight to the battle phase. Maybe they've got 20 seconds and the other guy's like, nope, we have to agree to go to battle phase let me check your graveyard first oops your 20 seconds is up you're stuck in the main phase of the standby or whatever you know let me check your grave let me check you know your bandage pile let me check my bandage pile let me ask you how many cards you have in your hand any small thing like that can take anywhere from 15 to 10 to 30 seconds and it's really hard to prove especially when it's your opponent's turn and my understanding was yeah it was happening all the time and that's why there were so many draws now when we get to the actual competitive side this was an absolute shock on my that like I, I just i can barely comprehend it I, I did not see this coming this is the top 32 breakdown for ycs sakakis oh my freaking goodness look at the cutie who is now standing on the top of the Yu-Gi-Oh world you go trickstar candina that's right some of you guys may think that this is 
like a troll? I promise you it is not. Trick Star Sky Strikers, or I guess we can call them Sky Striker Trick Stars, took up 50% of the top 32 for Sakakis. Uh, is this even real life? Like what? Trick Stars is now far and away the best deck of the format. And the crazy thing is, and I feel really, really stupid for this because, um, if I actually did make a Yu-Gi-Oh! Hierarchy Top 10 decks of this format, I probably would have had Trick Stars around 6, 7. I guess I just didn't really anticipate the impact that you could have when you added Sky Strikers to them. But when you really look at it on paper, Trick Stars were just, they were a deck that were trending so far up and up. And I think that maybe, maybe me and a lot of people didn't see the writing on the wall. When you look at Trick Stars, right, don't even think about the actual deck. Just think about some of the things that has happened with the deck in the last few months. Number one, we got another ban list where terraforming and reincarnation both completely skated okay so that means the deck is going to continue to be at full power number two and probably the biggest factor the end of match procedure rules benefit Trickstar more than any meta deck in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I even said that in one of my other top 10 decks. I said, look, the entire deck of Trickstar has just gotten a significant buff because when you can do effect damage in time, it's already pretty strong. But now when you can do effect damage with the new, you're just going to have one phase. It's even more valuable. Trickstar is a deck because of Lily Bell attacking directly, because of Candina being able to do burn damage, Lycoris can do burn damage, Holly Angel can do burn damage, Reincarnation nation can kind of trigger all of those guys effects you have light stage the field spell that also adds to the burn damage when you have so many ways of doing burn damage on any given turn any given phase no matter whose turn it is obviously that's really huge and i think that people are starting to be less and less willing to pay, uh, to pay life points not just because of the end of match but now when you're in a meta where trick stars are like half the meta dude you got to be careful if you pay red if you play red reboot because if you pay 4,000 life points trick stars might just kill you man you got to be careful if you pay solemn or play solemn judgment or if you happen to pay 2,000 life points for a solemn warning trick stars don't have to pay any of the or play any of those cards from what i saw from the first place build, yes, Trick Stars uh, or Sky Striker, Sky Striker Trick Star did actually end up winning this event. From what I saw, Trick Stars even dropped cards like Cosmic Cyclone. So when you look at Trick Stars, the fact that none of their cards have been hit, new end of match has basically buffed the deck. There was also the Waking the Dragon ruling uh, that I made a video on, where yes, at this event, New Jersey, they were playing with the new OCG ruling of Waking the Dragon will not actually activate uh, if your opponent sends it to the graveyard with Trick Star Light Stage. That's a another card that used to be amazing against trick stars now it's unplayable against them when it's pretty good against just about every other deck in the format it's kind of auto win but you can't play it against trick stars all of these small things have just been really big busts to the deck and then you obviously have the sky strikers and really when you look at trick stars right their adaptability has kind of been legendary. When Trickstars first started seeing top play, you know, they were playing Kaijus and Honest. Then they said, nah, we're just going to switch it up. We're going to start playing Cosmic Cyclone. We're going to play Eater of Millions. And now, look, they're playing, you know, they're not playing any of those cards. They're playing Sky Strikers. So they, they can have, if you guys haven't seen the videos now, I think Farf actually posted it, where if you open with Hornet Bit plus Reincarnation going second, you can do the Firewall OTK, you know, an OTK with Firewall Dragon. What a shock. <laughs> the legendary words of Jerome McHale from uh, Konami R&D but tricksters just have so much space you only really need a small monster engine of what like Oris, lily bell and candina you need a couple of field spells with your trickstar you know light stage and terraforming basically being an extra field spell and reincarnation everything else other than pot of desires is basically just tech cards so yeah tricksters have the space to incorporate anything when you look at the rest of the top 32 you see some of the, uh, you know, usual suspects like Spiral, Pendulum Magician still getting in there, ABC, which I'll talk about in a second, my Alter Guys, you have original Trick Stars, just pure variants, so don't think that it's only pure, you know, only Sky Striker Trick Stars, you have some pure Trick Stars in there taking up, you know, a couple of spots, you've got pure Sky Strikers, and then you have Goki being kind of like the second best deck right now, or at least taking up the, uh, the, the second most representation, and the crazy thing, if you expected Trick Stars to just fall off, like you thought that this was a fluke, um, um, look at the top four. This is <laughs> this is all you need to know. Like three Trick Star decks in the top four. Like don't please don't tell me that Trick Stars are not the best deck of the format because this pretty much settles it. When you take up fifty percent of the top thirty-two and then you take up seventy-five percent of the top four, like the argument is absolutely dead. If you guys are interested in seeing the first place build, here it is. I'll have it uh, linked. I watched this entire video. The guy seemed like he knew everything about the deck, and it was really good. Very very. 
informative. Now, I want to talk about Calvin Tahan's ABC because I, I do feel like ABC is a very undervalued deck, and maybe he's just an ABC guru, which he has topped multiple YCSs with ABC in different formats. Uh, a friend of mine once said on my live stream, that ABC are basically the new Burning Abyss. They can adapt to any format because Buster Dragon's so strong. All their cards, you know, the pieces all float and whatnot. And they kind of just need the field spell to pop off. But it's really crazy because he was playing a Ghost Second ABC. And I think you're actually starting to see more and more people play these Ghost Second decks where he's maining evenly matched. I saw that in a video that uh, Sam posted on his channel with Ghost Second Spirals main decking evenly matched and a billion hand traps. So for those of you guys out there who always want to go first, you got to be careful with these decks because evenly match is still one of the strongest cards in the entire meta and there really aren't that many answers to it other than like mind crush and you know maybe your own copy of like red reboot or something like that and i don't even know if red reboot really solves it because you might just be giving them more traps and that might cause more problems when you look at some of the other interesting feature matches that we had we had dz representing for the altar guys i feel you dz unfortunately uh just as my duel which i thought i thought this was kind of strange because i was like well is there some illuminati stuff going on dz played round eight and he ended up playing into time and unfortunately you know the duel was a draw that's the same exact thing that happened in my feature match at ycs atlanta i played alter guys round eight and it was actually a draw so that was unfortunate and dz played against trick stars which i played against too so i'm like bro this is <laughs> this is like exact deja vu you also had this match which i read this one part in this match this guy played 60 card pendulums for all you guys who think 60 card damage Deck, uh, 60 card decks are dead no apparently we just have to play pendulum builds this actually made top 32 and for everybody saying oh we all knew trick stars was a bet i want you to read this this is maybe the most legendary thing i've ever seen in my life it said both duelists moved to their side decks uh trufanowski declined to use his side deck to change any um to change any of the cards in his main deck stating that trick stars weren't good enough for him to need to use his side deck <laughs> This guy's saying, nah, dude, your deck is trash. I don't even need to side to beat you. By the way, he ended up uh, actually winning this duel and making it all the way to the top 32. That is the pendulum 3% here that you actually see. When it comes to the secondary market, it's as to be expected. Trickstar, or Trickstar Reincarnation, because the card is unlimited, because it has not been reprinted, because it is only a secret rare, it's sitting at about $50. I think it's completely understandable. I mean, a 50% of the meta is going to be Trickstars, and you basically are going to play two or three copies of this card. Also, Trickstar Reincarnation got better with the release of the Nightmares, because now, if it's in your opening hand, you can summon the Nightmare Monsters, you can discard Trickstar Reincarnation, you can summon one of your Trickstars back immediately, so having it in your hand is not really that big of a deal because you have discard outlets and then the another card i want to talk about and actually i kind of missed it this was another kind of buff to trick stars is seemingly droll and lockbird is the best hand trap in the meta a lot of people were running droll and lockbird instead of actually ash blossom and from what i saw ghost ogre seems to have fallen off the fucking planet man people were running cherries over that card but droll and lockbird obviously strong against trick stars and against uh, sky strikers uh same thing about goki Goki, anytime the monsters, you know, go from the field to the graveyard, they search, so you can kind of shut all of that down. They'll never be able to get all the search power that they want. Same thing goes if you're playing against Trick Stars. If they activate Reincarn, or not Reincarn, if they activate Light Stage, Terraforming, or Candina, you basically shut the rest of their turn down from searching. And against Sky Strikers, if you're playing against a pure build and they open with Toon Table of Contents or, you know, Mobilize Engage, you chain this and they're basically done. But the reason that this card being so powerful, it's kind of like a buff that trick stars because trick stars were already running this and obviously they have the reincarnation droll combo which can take away your entire hand so trick stars are like they're loving the fact that droll and lockbird is like one of the best cards because they're like yo we love this card we can droll your entire hand away with reincarnation so this was a crazy ycs there's no way in hell that i ever thought trick stars would be this dominant as a deck but the new rules kind of make it that you don't want to play a lot of life point cards and actually solemn's cards solemn cards in general are just terrible against trick stars because there's a very high chance the light stage is going to lock them down anyway so it was a crazy event and i really want to see where the nawcq and euro events are going to go do you guys think that trick stars are now the tier zero because of the new rules <laughs> too much burn damage man Whatever you guys think, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.